Prepare to read. The long, long journey. Genre study. Informational text is nonfiction. It gives facts about a topic. As you read the long, long journey, pay attention to order of events, main topic, and details. How pictures and words help you understand the text. Set a purpose. Ask questions before, during, and after you read to help you get information or understand the text. Look for evidence in the text and pictures to answer your questions. Power words: wobbly, trills, crouches, coast, prances, flock, root, mingles. Wobbly. Something that is wobbly is moving from side to side in a shaky way. The newborn donkey was wobbly on his feet. Trills. When a bird trills, it sings and chirps. The bird trills near my window. Crouches. When something crouches, it bends its legs and lowers its body. The tiger crouches in the tall grass. Coast. The coast is the land that is next to the sea. We love walking along the coast. Prances. When something prances, it moves by taking high steps. The beautiful horse prances in the snow. Flock. A flock is a group of birds. We saw a flock of geese in the pond. Root. A root is the path someone takes to get from place to place. We will take the quickest route to the concert hall for the big show. Mingles. When something mingles with another thing, the two things mix together. The new camper mingles with other children at camp. Meet Sandra Markle. Sandra Markle has written more than two hundred books for children. She loves being a writer because she gets to travel around the world doing research for her books. Once she spent several months in Antarctica with more than sixty thousand penguins. She also spent three days behind the scenes at a circus. Ms. Markle loves to talk to explorers and scientists about their work too. They inspire her and give her ideas about her own work. The Long Long Journey, by Sandra Markle, illustrated by Mia Posada. Crackle, crackle, crunch. The little female bar-tailed godwit at last breaks free of her egg. She steps into the world on long, wobbly legs. It's nearly midnight, but it's June in Alaska and still light. A cool wind blows the chick's downy coat. She shivers, lifts her beak, and squeaks. Beep, beep. The little female was the last to hatch. Two sisters and a brother are nearby with their father. They are hunting insects in the grass. Their mother next to the nest trills softly, and the chicks come running. They huddle with their sister, and their mother settles over them. This way, the newest chick stays warm and joins the family. For two days, the chicks stay close to the nest. Their parents take turns sitting on them to keep them warm. In between these rests, parents and chicks search for food. The parents need to double their body weight before fall. The chicks need to grow up and become strong. The little female learns to hunt spiders, crane fly larvae, and beetles. She eats all she can find. Soon, the little godwit and her family wander farther as they feed, but they are rarely alone. Lots of other godwits nest and feed in this treeless land. Sometimes other hunters come searching for food too.
One day, an arctic fox sneaks up and slips close to the little female. But her father spots the fox and squawks a warning. The little female is not yet able to fly. She crouches low and stays still. Her coloring helps her blend in with the grass. Her father flaps his wings and swoops at the fox. Her mother joins the attack, and so do other adult godwits. The fox runs off without its meal. For almost a month, the female godwit chick eats and eats and grows bigger. She also grows feathers and loses her fluffy down coat. When the chick isn't eating, she's hopping and flapping her wings. Her wings grow stronger with each hop flap. Then, one day, the young female godwit hops and flaps hard. For the first time, she does what godwits do best. She flies. In mid-August, the mother godwit leaves. The young birds stay near their father. They eat and practice flying hour after hour, so their wings grow even stronger. At last, they follow their father to the coast. They join thousands of godwits gathered on Alaska's Cape Avanoff mudflats. The young female prances across the mud on her long legs. Every step or two, she pokes her long beak deep into the muddy ground to find and eat tunneling worms and tiny clams. In September, flock after flock of adult godwits leave the mudflats. By mid-October, mostly only young birds remain. The young female is one of the flock. She practices flying with the other godwits. In between flights, she feeds alongside them. She eats and eats, growing very plump. Finally, when dark clouds sweep overhead, the young female rises with the flock. She is pushed southward by strong winds. Her long journey has begun. The young female flies through unfamiliar skies and over unknown seas. Although not one young bird has made this flight before, together they know the route to take. The young female squawks again and again as she flies. By listening for other godwit voices, she stays with the flock even in thick clouds and heavy rain. One day, a peregrine falcon hunting over an island swoops out of the clouds with wings folded and talon-tipped toes stretched out. The falcon aims straight for the young female, but she pumps her wings hard, climbs fast, and escapes. Another godwit isn't so lucky. Day after day and night after night, for nearly eight days, the godwits keep flying. The young female is thin. Her wings stroke slower. Still, she keeps going. Finally, there's green and brown ahead. The young female swoops down with the flock to the New Zealand mudflats, where land mingles with the sea. She arrives with two final wing flaps and lands on wobbly legs. Then, folding her wings, she falls asleep. The young female doesn't sleep for long, though. She needs to eat to get back her strength. She'll stay in New Zealand for two years until she's ready to raise a family of her own. Then, when March brings cool winds, she'll once again join the Godwit flock and make the long, long journey back to Alaska. Turn and Talk Use details from The Long, Long Journey to answer these questions with a partner. 1. Ask and answer questions. 
What questions did you ask yourself about the Godwit before, during, and after reading? How did your questions help you understand the text? 2. Godwit chicks stay with their parents when they are young. How does this help them survive? 3. Using what you learned from the text, explain what it would be like to be a Godwit chick. Talking tip. Listen carefully and politely. Say what you like about your partner's ideas.